Today's article message is about waves of faith. Last Sunday, we reviewed how Jesus fed a multitude of people, probably over 10,000 people, with just a few loaves and fish. After that event, you can imagine being in such a crowd, you might be tired. Jesus he didn't go immediately to the next event, but he actually paused and he took a break. He sent the disciples off sailing on a boat to go before him to the other side while he went up on a mountain and prayed to his Father and God. During that time of prayer, as we're familiar with this gospel story, during that time of prayer and being the Son of God, he knew a storm was a coming. And the disciples were caught in a pretty intense storm. And this was kind of similar to the time in which, if you remember when Jesus and the disciples were sailing together and a storm happened and they were afraid, well, now the disciples are alone. Isn't it amazing how Jesus teaches in the same ways that we teach today? We walk with people and then after a certain time, we step away and go do other things and we let that person go ahead or those people go ahead so they can learn a little bit more. And so this is what's happening in the gospel today. Jesus kind of pushes them off uh, gently and they encounter difficulties while they're alone. And in that encounter of difficulties, we don't know exactly if they're praying, but we do know that they are troubled and they are afraid. And that alone teaches us that it's okay to have those emotions and express those emotions. So Jesus concludes his prayer and he goes to meet them <clears throat> and to offer them comfort and solace, although he chooses to do so in a very creative way. He walks on the water towards them and immediately they see this and they fear that they're seeing a ghost, which says they must believe in ghosts or spirits or seeing them because they had a word for it. They knew what it was. So they think they're seeing a ghost and Jesus comforts them and says, no, no, it is I. And that phrase, it is I, is a messianic phrase, but it is really a divine phrase. It's the divine name of God, which is translated literally to I am. So Jesus, he reveals his identity. Peter sees him and he wants to test the spirit. It's always good to test the spirits. We need to make sure the spirits that we encounter are good and holy because we know that there are evil spirits out there and even Satan is an angel of light. So it can be confusing. It can be distorted if we're not testing the spirit. So Peter, he wants to know for sure, is it you, Lord? If it's you, you and I who've talked together over the, over the months and days, invite me to come to you. And so Jesus does. And Peter, perhaps without thinking, gets out of the boat and starts walking towards him as if he's walking on dry land, just like Jesus. But he sees the wind, which is an interesting phrase on its own because they're out in the middle of the ocean. So probably he sees the waves. You know, how many foot waves are there? He sees the wind. One translation says that it's a boisterous wind, so the waves, perhaps several feet high, he sees those waves and he remembers his fear. And he, in a way, loses his faith because he begins to sink. He's focused so much on the storm around him that he somehow forgets that Jesus is right in front of him. This alone is a wonderful message for us. And it's one of the discussion questions that you can look to and reflect upon. So Jesus saves Peter because Peter cries out for salvation. Immediately, they're back in the boat. The storm has ceased once again at Jesus' command. And the disciples know another amazing miracle about Jesus. Jesus continually is proving that he is divine, that he is the Son of God in these experiences. It's amazing. We see multiple people, not just one-on-one, -on -one, not just, you know, Jesus, like the Samaritan woman, they're by themselves. It's hard to have witnesses. No, in this situation, all together, 
they see what Jesus is doing. They see who he truly is. The discussion topics and questions, I wrote these in the first person this time. I'm interested to know if it, if it increases your engagement to read the questions in the first person so that it's like you talking. Let me know. Do you like questions in the first person written this way? You can let me know at your convenience. Well, friends and family of St. Catherine, we'll look forward to praying and worshiping our Lord with you soon. Until next time, with love in Christ.